How's it going today, guys? Um, just going to do a video real fast. Um, just going to be a tour of the, tour of the house, of the, the farm, uh, as a lot of my friends like to call it. Uh, just shows you a little bit of everything that I'm doing at the house, uh, what my family's doing to prepare to be more self-sufficient. We're working towards self-sufficiency. That's kind of the whole idea of everything that we do here with the animals and with the food. So just a quick little video, uh, try to take you through and explain, uh, not in super great detail, but just a little bit about everything that we have so far and what we want to do in the future. So here we go. So we're gonna start in the front yard. Um, this is the tree well. In one of my previous videos, I showed how I made this tree well. This is our plum tree. We have two other fruit trees in the front yard. This is our apple tree and then our cherry tree over there. And something that I've done recently is we added some more growing space in the front yard along the chain link fence. So right here we have a blueberry. Right up against the fence we have a kiwi. We have some lavender here in the middle, another kiwi, more lavender, another kiwi, and blueberry. So we have a female kiwi here, a female kiwi here, and a male kiwi here. Uh, it's an incomplete fruit, it's an imperfect fruit, uh, the hardy kiwi, so you need a male in order to get fruit out of the two females. We have a lavender here in the middle between those two, mostly because lavender looks really great, it smells awesome, it's great for the bees, but there's a lot of homeopathic benefits to lavender. Uh, you can harvest that every year and use that, you can make essential oils with it. Um, use it as a rub just straight up um, as the flower for a lot of different things so um, if you didn't notice already we got the big heavy mulch for the trees here and we got heavy mulch where all of these plants are in the front yard um, put that in since putting that in I've watered very few very few times for the grass in the front yard the wood chips do get wet um, and the plants are just loving life in there so we'll take you into the back, and here you get a quick little shot of my mistress here. This is Black Betty, uh, 1980 CB900. Uh, looks a lot different than what it did when I bought it, but uh, she's on her way to being quite the nice little cafe racer. So there's that extra pile of wood chips. Again, in a previous video, talked about. Um, how I get the wood chips, where I get the wood chips, all of that. I just have yet to move these to their permanent location in the backyard. Come back here. Take you to see. This here is the chicken coop. It was an old shed that was used as like a play area before. Have a tire holding the door closed because my 10 year old son opened up the door while it was latched, ripped the latch out of the wall. I have yet to replace that. So. We have a tire. Here are the ladies. We have uh, 10 chickens total, 10 laying hens, no roosters, because I'm in city limits, and they get a little, uh, little upset about that. So this is their area. Bunch of space for them. I could probably get another 10 chickens, and they'd still be fine. Um, everything goes in here with the chickens, just like Paul Gauchi from the Back to Eden documentary. And they eat it, they scratch, they poop, they make dirt. And so far I've had these 10 girls in this space um, maybe about a year and the grade is up already about three inches. So there's three inches of organic material on top of the pre-existing dirt in here because of the ladies and they're making some awesome compost for me that we will put on the garden in the fall. They walk up this pallet up inside they can roost they lay their eggs in there and I collect them and they're happy for the most part and then over to the goat pen um, made this gate or made this fencing um, last fall along with you know the, these ladies here um, last fall uh, out of wood when I go up and I cut wood for the for the winter for our heat because we have a wood burning stove inside I just cut down some extra trees and used those as uh, the fencing to keep the goat in. Here's our goat. We had two, um, two females, tried to get them pregnant, neither of them took, which was a bummer. They weren't super 
happy goats. Um, they were very, very standoffish, very timid. They didn't want you anywhere near them. And it was, in my theory, due in large part to one of the two. This is not the one. This is now a happy goat. It lets you pet her and come up. Easy to trim her hooves, all of that stuff. The other goat, the other female, was not a happy goat, so we ate her. <laughs> Ended up butchering her up and eating her, and now we have a very happy goat that uh, likes to have people around. Made, uh, this is an old chicken coop that I had made a long time ago out of just scrap material lying around. The only thing I bought was the tin roof. Um, it's still holding strong, which is quite the surprise because it's made out of particle board and it gets weathered pretty pretty bad so um, anyway it's second it, it, it is used now as a partial goat uh, structure and then the back goat structure was also just from lying stuff lying around used a chainsaw to cut my uh, wood to size and um, everything was kind of warped so I mean it holds together and it keeps keeps uh, keeps our goat dry and warm in the winter or when the weather is inclement so there's that um, take you over show you they got they got a little bit of wood stored up so far this is not even a quarter of the amount that I need this is just under a cord of wood I'm gonna probably get about four cords for the winter this year and see if I have any left over by you know the beginning of spring or what I'm gonna have to do there so, take you over to get the fire pit here whatever doesn't go to the chickens goes over here gets burnt and then I throw all the ashes in with the chickens uh, so I just have some extra wood and some other organic material that I don't throw to the chickens for whatever reason I just don't feel like it so there's, there's that got a couple different plants over here blueberry bush blackberry bush blueberry bush Eventually, this entire hill, I'm, you may not be able to tell, but I'm kind of on a hill. This hill will all be wood chipped garden. It will be dubbed Berry Hill because then over here I got a handful of strawberries started this year. We will um, just expand on that as the years go on and have a whole lot of strawberries. Also have potatoes. Some doing great, some aren't doing great. Um, didn't bury them as deep in the wood chips as I should have. Uh, it's recommended put the potatoes on the ground, cover it with up to 14 inches of wood chips, and you're good to go. I covered it with like three, and just being so busy, haven't really gotten around to it, so just let it grow. Uh, everything's kind of an experiment around here, so we'll figure that out as we go. Next time we'll, we'll cover it with the proper amount of wood chips. Back here, we got our beehive going. Uh, this is the first year with the bees. They're doing awesome. We're on our first honey super at the top. Um, it's probably close to 50% full, so we'll be adding another super here in about a week or two. You see the bees coming in and out of there. Um, we got a ditch that runs through our backyard, which has been a huge blessing uh, for the animals. And it's nice because the bees always have water whenever they need it. Over here, just this here is just bark left over from splitting all the wood and little pieces of kindling that I have yet to pick out of there. Yeah, we got our rain harvesting system here. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. You got a manifold system on the bottom. Four 55 gallon drums connected. They fill up all at the same time through that spout, that downspout, into this container that has some rocks in it as a uh, simple, simple filter goes in there. Comes out. You got a ball valve here that you can turn off and on to drain that water out of and use for whatever you would use water for. Uh, we got the garden here, uh, fairly good size for a backyard garden. All in all, with every every bit of uh, growing space, we're sitting at just over. Uh, 1100 square foot of garden you got tomato cages again there's a video on that making these tomato cages out of horse fencing uh, I got the raspberries in the back over there some pepper plants more tomatoes that don't have cages so they're kind of all over the place here and here um, different peppers and assorted other uh, beans and type of things over there uh, uh, cauliflower squashes that kind of thing 
pre-existing um, pear tree here. Sorry about the finger. Um, yeah, it's not too exciting. It's just a pear tree, so we're eating pears. More wood chips in the back. All of this area here is just being conditioned for next year. Um, yeah, wood chips on the ground. Best way to garden. Back to Eden style is the way we do it. You'll hear me refer to that a lot in my videos because uh, I'm kind of sold out on it. So. Going back into the front yard. More wood chips. Um, just, again, waiting for next year. Just conditioning the soil. This was a tree that I cut down, thrown back, gotta cut it down again. That's about that. So, and then we're back to the front yard. Sorry about the shakiness. I have my iPhone today because my camcorder is being used by somebody else. So, anyway, that's the uh, the farm, um, like I said, as my friends like to call it. Um, we've only been doing this for a few years. Well, not even a few years, about a year and a half. Uh, working on this goal of self-sufficiency. The idea is in five years from when we started that 50% of what we consume in a year with a family of four will come from this house. One thing I didn't show or mention is the fact that we also do meat rabbit. This is at this point, um, the rabbits that we had were not working out. So we dispatched them and I'm just waiting to find some good rabbits. So we'll end on a high note taking a look at the CB900. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment, any questions, and subscribe. Talk to you guys later.